Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today we're going to be painting Ocean Sailboat Sunset and I'm going to be drinking a little Bordeaux rose wine. Um, so let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for the materials that we're using today, we're going to be using a 16 by 20 stretched and primed canvas. Um, you can certainly switch up the size, but this is what I'm using. You can get it at any of your local craft stores or online. We're going to be using acrylic paint. The colors I'll be using is titanium white, ultramarine blue, fluorescent orange, chrome yellow, fire red, burnt umber, and Mars black. And again, you can switch up the colors, but that's the ones I'm using. You're gonna need a cup of water for washing your brushes. You'll need a paper towel for drying your brushes. And the two brushes I'm using today is a one inch wide bristle brush and a number two round synthetic brush. And that's all you're gonna need for this painting today. All right, so the first step that we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be using our bristle brush, and you're gonna be using all of the colors on your palette, except for black, to paint the sky. So we're gonna be painting the sky. It's gonna come about two thirds of the way down your canvas. I'm gonna be starting with blue and white on my brush at the same time. And I'm gonna be using like a left to right, almost like a long kind of crisscrossy motion. I like to paint the edges of my canvas as I go along. That way um, it looks all nice and professional. By the time I'm done, I've got a nice covered edge and I can hang it up without thinking of having to put a frame around it. So I started with just blue and white on my brush. Now I'm gonna just pick up white without washing my brush. And what's gonna happen is that blue is gonna kind of work its way off of my brush and I'm gonna end up with a nice lighter um, area right after the blue and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that brightness or lightness that I have on my brush right now to start my center sun area where that sun is going to be kind of drifting off into the distance so I'm just picking up white at this point um, and I'm going to bring this white pretty far down just so I maintain um, an area that I've painted with white paint. I don't really want to dilute this with other colors at the moment because I want to be able to keep this center spot nice and bright. Um, so once I have a nice bright area down the center, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to go into that fluorescent orange. And the reason why I go into that color next to start adding these sunset colors is because I know that I have a little bit of blue left over on my brush and I know that if I went into say yellow next, I would end up with a big green spot on my sky. And I don't really want to do that. So what I'm doing is I'm going into the orange next, which is going to allow me for a nice transition. Um, if I do have any remnants of blue on my brush, it's going to um, prevent any, um, you know, accidents, not, not, not that accidents in painting are bad, but um, it'll prevent me from getting a really green sky. So now I'm gonna start picking up my yellow and introducing that yellow into the sunset. And you saw how I started kind of down at the bottom of this, and now I'm just kind of working my way up. I'm introducing the um, brighter colors almost into that, um, the sun area that I have in the middle. And I'm not washing my brush because I really like these colors to work together. I just picked up some white. So now I'm gonna start to really get these colors to merge together. But again, all the while I'm still leaving some of that bright area in the center to allow for it to be, you know, give you the, the illusion that the sun is just kind of peeking through as it's going down. Um, I do want this to transition and make sure that it blends with that blue up top So that's why I'm kind of going back up into it And if I feel like it's green at all I'm gonna touch my brush into that orange because that's gonna counteract it and you can just kind of 
get these all to blend together and you can make it as bright or as dark as you want. And now I'm gonna start introducing red and brown down at the bottom of my sunset. So I'm laying these right on top of the other colors. I want it to really all look like it belongs together. And this is one of those steps that you could really make as personal as you want and get it to be as bright or as dark as you want. Um, I like this painting to have a lot of drama in it, so I really have a high contrast of colors from the um, sunset area to the bright area in the middle. So now I'm picking up some brown and I'm using that right at the bottom of the canvas. And I know from experience that these darker colors will dry darker than they darker than they are when they're wet. So like these red and brown, I know are gonna be a little bit darker um, when they dry. So if they appear to be a little bit too light visually for me right now, that's okay because they're gonna end up a little bit darker. I am at this point gonna just wipe my brush off on my paper towel because I feel like it's, um, you can wash it too if you want to. I feel like it's almost muddled right now with too many colors. So I just kind of quickly washed it so I can make sure that I get this sky the way that I want to. I went back into white and now I'm gonna just kind of re-identify um, that center area, make sure I have everything nice and blended together. I don't really like any spots that look like um, kind of dry. I want them to really look like they're well blended. Um, so I'm using a very light touch when I do this, but I did have um, a little bit of white on my brush because white really works well when you're trying to blend in these colors together. You can use it as kind of that um, connecting piece, so to speak. Um, you can make it as dramatic as you want. If you want to add a little bit more blue, I just picked up a little bit more blue, so maybe I add a little bit more drama up towards the top. Um, but what I'm really doing right now is just kind of making sure all of these colors blend in nice together and that I have a good transition into that middle section. Um, so I'm just kind of going through, making sure everything works well together, making sure I still have that nice bright area in the center, and making sure I don't have what I refer to as dry spots that look like I haven't fully painted them. Um, so this could be what's referred to maybe as a second coat on it, um, but for me it's just kind of finalizing it, making sure I've got the the dimension that I want and making sure all these colors look like they belong together because that's what happens in the sky. They, they just kind of merge together and I'm just kind of going back and making sure that I'm happy with it. I've got a nice bright area in the center. I've got my blue sky that's just kind of dissipating up on the top and it goes down into this nice dramatic sunset area down at the bottom. And then that's going to conclude this step. So when you're all set, what you're gonna do is you're gonna wash and dry this big brush. Oh, let me just tidy up this one little spot here. You'll wash and dry this big brush. Da, 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 and get ready for the next step. All right, so for the next step, I'm gonna be painting the water. I'm gonna be using all my colors this time except for black and blue. So I'll use white, brown, red, yellow, and orange. And I'm going to choose to not use the blue in the water um, just out of a preference. I guess you could use the blue because the water is meant to reflect the sky, but in my case, I'm gonna choose to um, not use it. And the very first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my horizon line. So for me, I want my horizon line to be super bright. So I'm gonna use white and yellow on my brush to create this horizon line. And I got a couple of little cheats for you to get in semi-straight line without using a ruler. So on the left-hand side, your line for your horizon has to be entirely in your sky. So I'm gonna choose what I see to be as like the highest spot of non-painted canvas, and I'm gonna make myself a mark. Then I use my brush as a ruler, and I'm gonna say, okay, that's how high this line is, or this mark is. So I'm gonna go over onto the other side, and I'm gonna make a mark just as high as this one, because you, you can see this is almost to the top of my bristles. And on this side, I need to do the same thing. So I'm gonna make a mark up right about there. Now I'm gonna connect these two lines in a pretty quick motion. I'm gonna always keep my eye on the prize, which is the other dot. 
So even if you don't get um, the line perfectly executed, oops, on this um, step, you can modify it. But if you keep your eye on the prize the whole time, you're gonna get a pretty straight line. So even if the paint underneath is wet, as you can see mine is, that's okay. You're just going to get this line to kind of work together. And you can see I'm kind of going back and forth a couple of times just to make sure I've got it as straight as I visually can. And then you can certainly tweak it as you want. But what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm just gonna start working on my water. So I just put yellow and white on my brush because I really want this top area to be nice and bright. So I've got yellow and white and I'm just kind of going across with it, make sure I've got myself a decent horizon line. Now I'm just going to pick up white to start my center reflection of that sky. And I like to put mine off at an angle. So again, that adds a little bit of drama. You can see my brush is um, kind of getting rid of some other colors that were on it. And once I get that brighter area down the center, which of course you can modify as you go, um, I'm gonna start adding in my other sky colors. Now my goal here is to have the top light and the bottom dark. So again, this is gonna add that drama to it. So my colors that I'm gonna start using up at the top are the white, yellow, and orange. So those are gonna be pretty um, consistent up at the top. Now, unlike the sky, this can be choppier looking. Um, you can have more, um, almost like distinct streaks going through as opposed to a smooth finish like you have the sky. The sky is more um, blended, so to speak, um, and down in the water, it certainly can be choppy. That's gonna um, lend the look of like ripples in the water. Um, it's gonna show movement. Now I'm going into my red. So this is gonna start pulling those darker colors down. And I'm just kind of adding these colors and I'm almost kind of pulling them or pushing them into that center area. Again, I want them to blend, but I don't want them to overpower it. Um, I'm picking up some more yellow at this point. I want the yellow to be represented through the whole thing. Um, and my goal, again, is just to kind of get this to go a little bit darker as it comes down to the bottom of my canvas. Um, all the while making sure I get it to blend or to, it, to interact with that center um, area of the highlighted sun here. So you can have multiple colors on your brush. I just picked up yellow, orange, and red at the same time. Um, I will be using that brown in a minute, but I wanna make sure I get a good amount of that white that I used for the center. I want that to kind of get off of my brush a bit before I start using brown. Um, the brown and the white will sometimes make almost like a muddy look. So if you get a lot of that white off of there before you start using the brown, you're gonna have um, better success in getting that brown to be nice and dark, dark, dark. Um, so again, I'm just still using the um, yellow, orange, and red to get these um, dominant, rich kind of sunsetty colors on here. I think I want a little bit more yellow in the center area, so I just picked up some yellow. And once I get this all nice and kind of filled in, that's when I'm gonna start really introducing that brown. I'm digging what's going on right now, but I wanna make sure that I've got um, a good representation of this bright area and making sure that it, it works well with the colors that are next to it. So I've got that nice. Now I'm gonna start picking up that brown. And this is where the drama starts. And you get these nice, bold, bright colors that are sitting next to this darkness and it really adds that bit of dimension, lets you feel like you're going right into the painting and you're gonna be following that. We're gonna be painting a little sailboat so your, your eyes are gonna be drawn right to that once you have these nice dark colors down here. And so almost done with this section because I'm thinking it's coming out pretty decent. I've got some nice dark colors working their way next to these bold, vibrant center colors in through here. I might do a little bit of touch up later, but I'm kind of digging that. So I think 
what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna go on to the next step and the next step is gonna be done with your small brush. So once you've fiddled with this water enough, it's really hard to stop sometimes, that's why I, I just keep painting here. Um, but once you feel like you've fiddled with this enough and you have enough kind of drama and um, distinction between that highlighted area and the areas that go next to it, what you can do is you can put that big brush away in your water cup and you can take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so the next step we're gonna be doing is painting the birds. I'm gonna be using black paint and I'm gonna be using my number two brush. Um, we're gonna be making small lines here and one of my tricks for making small lines is I'm gonna take my black paint, I'm gonna add a touch of water to it and my goal here is to make this like an ink consistency. So I make it nice and thin, not drippy thin, just a touch of water in it. And I take my brush and I spin it in the side of my palette. Um, so that way my brush gets nice and pointy. And when I go to paint these birds, I'm not going to press hard. And you can always practice on like a piece of paper or something before you do that first one. Um, but when I go to do these, they're gonna be the ones that I learned in first grade, those long like M's, um, and I'm going to make them different sizes and at different angles. So here I go, I'm gonna do my first one, and I'm gonna do it maybe somewhere up here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna press hard, I'm gonna go in and like that. And then so then maybe my next one is a little tiny one. Maybe my third one is over here and it's at a different angle. So you could really make them as big or as small as you want um, based on preference. You could do them all over your canvas but I'm just going to do a few like that um, and that's all I'm going to do for my birds. So I am going to use my small brush for the next step uh, but you're going to want to, you don't even have to wash it because we're going to use black. So small brush next step just get ready. All right, so the next step we're doing is we're gonna do the outline to the boat. I'm gonna be using black paint only and I'm gonna be using my small number two brush. So the same thing goes, use that watered down paint, um, spin your brush on the side of the palette. What I'm doing is I'm gonna be going about an inch or two away from my horizon line. I'm gonna be making it about three inches wide. I start with like a rectangle. So you can start with a little rectangle, a long rectangle, just painted in black. And you can see because I'm using watered down paint, it's a little bit see-through, but life's gonna go on. We're gonna paint over it in a minute. I like the thin paint too, because it's going to dry fast. I'm gonna do a little bump up for the edge of the boat over on the right hand side. And I'll do the same thing over on the left hand side. So that way it gives the boat some kind of shape other than a rectangle. And once I've got that shape in there, I'm gonna use the same black paint. I'm gonna do a vertical line somewhere from the center and you can go up or down, whatever works for you. I'm going pretty darn high. I'm not pushing hard and I'm making myself a pretty slender line. And you can see mine's not super straight, doesn't have to be. I want to make myself um, kind of like a peekaboo spot so you can see underneath the sails. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do an arced line over on the right, almost to the back of the boat. And same thing for the right or the left-hand side, an arced. I make one a little bit different than the other. I'm gonna be putting some people in my boat so I made the left side a little bit higher. Now I'm gonna make myself the shape of the sails. So I'm gonna not start at the tippy top, but maybe a little bit away from the tippy top of my line and just kind of bring this down in some kind of line. It can be wobbly like that. It's a piece of canvas for the sail, so it doesn't have to be super straight. I'm gonna do the same thing for the left. Oops, you like it when the instructor says oops. Um, so I just extended my line a little bit higher. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the left. I don't want these sides to look exactly the same because the wind is taking them, so they don't have to look perfect. Um, so then I'm also gonna put little people 
for my little people, they are literally two like ovals. One is taller than the other. The taller one is the guy, and I'm gonna put a diagonal line to indicate he has a hat on him. And for her, I'm gonna put a little like ponytail thing, just a little bit of hair, maybe sticking out the back to indicate that she's got some hair. And that's all I'm gonna do for my people. If you want a little rope at the top, you can just take that black and almost make a bow tie like a shoe, like you're tying your sneakers. And that's what I'm gonna do for the outline of my boat. Then you can wash and dry that small brush in preparation for the next step. So the next step that I'm gonna do is the shadow reflection in the water of the boat. So what, cause we don't want this to look like it's levitating in the water. We want it to look like it's actually in the water. So we need to make movement around the boat. So what I'm gonna be using is red and black. Cause I know that we're gonna see both of them. The black will overpower the red. So I'm gonna use more red to start. And what I'm doing is I'm just in essence putting some horizontal marks. They don't have to be perfect lines, just horizontal marks. You want to make sure you bring them up past the bottom of the boat so they almost look like they're coming around the boat from the other side. And you can put them, you know, as far back as you want because that shows the trail of the water and the front is going to show kind of like the push of the water. So I've got some red on there. Now I'm gonna pick up a little bit of black and this is going to just almost um, kind of intensify the, the movement. Um, and if you feel like it's too dark, you can certainly add a little bit of white for like white caps, but that's gonna be a visual preference on your part. Um, so the white caps could be anywhere. They could be in the front or the sides or whatever you feel is appropriate. So then I am going to wash and dry this small brush. We'll use it for the next step. So that's it for that one and get ready for the next step. Okay, so for the next step, we're actually finishing the sails and the boat. Um, so I'm gonna color in my sails first. I want mine to just be kind of like a canvasy color. So I'm gonna use, and I, it can also like reflect what you're seeing um, from the landscape. So I'm definitely using some white because that's gonna act as like a primer coat um, to uh, cover that horizon line because you might find that that horizon line is a little bit difficult to cover just because you might have used thick paint or it's a dark contrasting. Um, I do like to go over some of this black outline that I've used, but I want that black outline there because I'm gonna utilize it for um, little stitching along the sides of, the, um, of this canvas kind of um, sail that I'm creating. But you can really make these sails whatever color. I mean, I've, I've done this class a hundred times and, and people make blue sails or vibrant yellow sails or super red sails, patriotic sails, um, polka dotted ones. You could really do whatever is visually appealing to you. Um, but my trick here is I'm not using a lot of paint um, and what's gonna happen is it dries fast, which is gonna allow me to put a second coat on it if I need to for coverage purposes. Um, but that again is a preference on your part you will be able to see the black through it which is on purpose um, from my part because I wanted you to be able to to see that um, but again you could like I just added a little bit of brown to my to my color combination because I wanted it a little bit darker but again it's all in whatever is visually appealing to you um, once you kind of get it and I might I just added a touch of black too. I think I want this a little bit darker too, like it's being shadowed by the sunset. Um, you can really make this whatever shade you want. I just added a little bit of red. I'm kind of 
playing with it as I go because I'm, I'm just testing what I like visually with it and I'm thinking I wanted it a little bit darker just so I can um, almost make it feel silhouette-y because it's such a cool like sunset kind of picture. Um, and then once you get it the way that you, whatever color you're looking for, um, I like to add a little bit of stitching along the sides. So you can do a couple of different things. Um, I'm gonna put a little bit of white on my brush, which is going to kind of um, separate and add a little bit of um, dimension to the canvas sail as if it's like buckled out a little bit. Um, and then what I'm gonna do, I don't wash my brush off and you'll probably notice that. I just added a little bit of black and I'm doing these like little tiny diagonal stitches along the edge. But that again is, you know, a preference. Not a lot of people, you know, even care about that stuff. I might re-identify this center line to make sure that the viewer can tell that there's two sails here instead of one. Uh, maybe I'll put a couple of little stitches on the back. Maybe I won't, depends on, you know, what kind of mood I'm in. Um, and then I'm just gonna add a little bit of highlight to the front of the boat. So I just picked up white, yellow, and red, and I'm starting at the front of the boat. I add a highlight here and I just pull it back. So that way it's brighter at the very front of the boat as if it's being illuminated by this sun over here. And then I just pull it so it almost fades into the black of the bow. And because I'm doing it in this curve, it's going to add shape to the bow as well. And if you need to, you can, you know, make that back of the bow even blacker, or you could, you could have a, you know, a red bow. You could really make this as um, colorful or not colorful as you want. And that is gonna conclude that part of it. And there's always one final step to every good painting and it's gonna be with the small brush. So after you're done with your, your boat and you have the sail and the people and the little highlight as much as you want, you're gonna wash and dry your small brush and get ready for that final little step. All right, so the last step to any good painting is signing it. So I'm gonna use my small brush, I'm gonna use black paint. I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right corner and because the boat's over here, I think I'm gonna sign mine over here. I like to use my initials Sometimes I'll date it, depends on what, again, what kind of mood I'm in. Um, but that's it. Signature on, painting done. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you love your painting, and I look forward to painting with you again sometime.